All right, this is how I got an engineering internship at SpaceX. These are the topics I'm going to cover today. Number one, really quickly in about 30 seconds, who we are, the two internship offers I received from SpaceX, what was on my resume when I got my internship offers from SpaceX, specifically that first offer, the steps I took to get those engineering internship offers, what I think helped me stand out. And then if you watch all the way to the end, some quick tips for engineering students. So number one, destination internship, who are we? Well, internships are tricky and we're here to help. Really quickly, some internship offers that we received during college include offers from SpaceX, Tesla, McKinsey, ExxonMobil, Boston Consulting Group, General Motors, John Deere, and a lot more. I didn't list them all out because I wanted to also share some places that you can find us online. That's TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, some of the popular podcast listening platforms, and our email newsletter. If you know, you're interested in that email newsletter, check out the description, but also definitely follow us if you're interested in more engineering internship content. Comment as well what your major is. Let us know what type of internship you're looking for and if you have any specific questions for us. So let's get started. Now, before I get into this, I actually received two offers from SpaceX for engineering internships. The first time around was a vehicle engineering internship offer. And I would have been based out of Hawthorne, California. For various reasons, I didn't work that internship. But the second time around, the offer that I got and I ended up working this internship was for a Starship Operations Engineering internship. And that was located at Starbase in Brownsville, Texas. These were the sections on my resume when I received my first internship offer from SpaceX. Number one, a personal statement. Number two, the education section section, an engineering experience section, leadership and involvement, and skills and recognition. So the personal statement was three sentences. I talked about me, my past experiences, and what I was looking for, uh, the type of internship and type of experience I was looking for. But to be honest, I don't want to spend too much time talking about the personal space statement. So Let's go into some of the more interesting parts of my resume. Number one, the education. My degree was electrical engineering. That's what I spent a couple of years studying, electrical engineering. Um, my school, I don't share much about where I went to school, but to give some context, my school was not ranked in the top 100 engineering school rankings. My GPA at the time for that first offer was about a 3.83 out of 4.0. And then where was I at in school? I had about three to four semesters remaining. And to visualize that, I started school with some credits and I would be graduating after after about seven, seven semesters of classes, I had already completed three semesters and was in that in the middle of that fourth one. So depending on how you look at it, I had about three to four semesters left of my of my undergraduate degree. So the engineering experience section on my resume, aka some past internships, what did that look like when I was getting that first internship offer from SpaceX? Number one, I had a co-op experience at ExxonMobil. It was an instrumentation engineering co-op. And if you're not familiar with ExxonMobil, it's a Fortune 10 oil and gas company, really large and well-known. That experience was about six months long working at the Baton Rouge refinery in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. My next internship that I worked, or the first internship I worked, but the next one I'm going to talk about was at John Deere as a product test engineering intern. If you're not familiar with John Deere, it's a Fortune 100 heavy equipment manufacturer. They produce construction equipment and tractors, lawn care equipment, things like that. That was a three month summer internship and took place in Waterloo, Iowa at the tractor cab assembly operations manufacturer manufacturing site. Let's go into some of the leadership and involvement experience I had on my resume as well. And that's going to basically be your clubs and student organizations. On campus, I co-founded an engineering student club, and that was that was a pretty fun experience. That was one of you know the main, more recent experiences on my resume. In addition to that, I was an undergraduate teaching assistant for two different classes in the electrical engineering curriculum at my school. The first was just a circuits one lab, and the next was for a digital logic lab. Additionally, as for the College of Engineering, I was played a role as a student representative. That was basically promoting and supporting the college at different on-campus events. And the next thing was a peer mentor within the College of Engineering. I was basically responsible for mentoring incoming students and hosting different activities on campus. The next section of my resume was basically skills and recognition. Here I covered skills, awards, things like that. So the first one, which I think was probably the biggest, was a national engineering award that I received. And then the next was a local engineering scholarship and award that I received. Next experience or skill that I had was a foreign language skill. I had studied Mandarin Chinese in high school. And so that was on my resume. I was actually during high school part had participated in uh, a competition several years in a row. 
at those competitions, I received a silver medal. So that's where this award takes place. The next skill I had in there was a Lean Systems student certification. That was something that my school offered. They offered a certification in Lean Systems. And so that was additionally something I had on the, on the resume. Next skill I had was a public speaking course at one of my previous internships. So I had public speaking as a skill and then was sort of able to back that up with my with this course I had taken at a previous internship, this course and training. So the next thing on the resume was basically, so there you go, at public speaking course in previ at one of my previous internships. Uh, how I actually received these two offers the first time around was basically networking on LinkedIn with recruiters and employees. I reached out to recruiters and employees on LinkedIn. I would say if you're going to be doing this for whatever internship you want, one of the most important things you can do is just be strategic with who you're reaching out to. So you're reaching out to the right types of people. Uh, the second time around, it was just because remember that first offer I got, I ended up not working that internship. But the second time around, the offer came from reaching back out through email to the people I was connected with while receiving that first offer. So really it, it was networking on LinkedIn with recruiters, employees. And what I will say also, when you're networking on LinkedIn for any type of internship you're, you're trying to get or a new grad job offer, it's important, like I said, to be strategic. You're reaching out to the right people who want to help you and can help you, but also that you're actually taking the time to, to craft a good message that really gets your point across quickly. Now, before I share what I think helped me stand out and some tips for engineering students, one thing I wanted to share quickly about is the Ultimate Engineering Internship course. This is a course that we've produced that basically takes all of our best advice for getting engineering internships and compiles it into a single resource where in the Ultimate Engineering Internship course, we walk you through the six steps to getting an engineering internship. During our entire college careers, we found that any internship we've received follows these six steps and we've taken our best advice for each of the six steps and compiled it into a single course. And so the topics we talk about in that course are basically how to develop a compelling set of skills and experiences, craft an impactful and effective resume, excel at on-campus career fairs, build powerful professional networks, navigate online applications, deliver exceptional interviews. And it's really important, those six steps, what we found, it, the importance of that is they, they all work together. So if you start from number six, delivering exceptional interview performance, you have to do that to get an internship offer. But how do you even get an interview? Well, you have to either, you have to excel at either on-campus career fairs, networking, or navigating those online applications. But how do you actually su succeed with any of those three? Well, you have to have a good resume. But to have a good resume, you have to have a compelling set of skills and experiences, which is why we're so confident in these six steps to getting an engineering internship. So again, if that's something you're interested in, the Ultimate Engineering Internship course walks you through these six steps with a variety of teaching methods, including uh, on-demand instructional video, worksheets, templates, formulas, things like that. Each of these topics are taught with a mix of through a, di a mix of different um, teaching modalities. So. Let's move on to the rest of this, this video. Here's what I kind of think helped me stand out through the hiring process. Number one was the depth of relevant experience that I had through past internships and on-campus involvement. I really focused on getting a strong set of what I like to call recent and relevant experience. It's something I like to talk about a lot because that's really how you can pitch yourself to employers. And then second was just exceptional interview performance. Again, interview performance, highly important. It is part of those six steps. And again, even number one, developing relevant experience. Remember the six steps we started in, in that course, developing strong set of skills and experiences. That's what I think helped me stand out one way. And then the sixth step, delivering exceptional interview performance. That's one thing that I think I did really well in the hiring process. I did a lot on, in terms of preparing content to talk about. Specifically, I remember the very first offer I got. I was on campus and I was, I was very much putting a lot of effort into preparing for that interview. Um, and also what I did to prepare was basically do a lot of company research. So I was able to con converse well with the interviewer about the company during the, the interview, the actual interview. And I even remember, like I said, that week, le the week that I had those interviews lined up, I very distinctly remember, uh, 
being in the library for a very, very, being in the library on campus for a very, very long amount of time, just researching the company, researching different things that could help me perform well on the interview. And, and it, when I say it was a lot of time, I, I'm not joking when I say a lot of time was put into really understanding the company and then understanding the, the specific position that I was interviewing for, but also just understanding interview strategies, interview techniques. So we've kind of taken everything we've learned throughout our college career and put it back into that course. I don't want to pitch that too much here, but that that um, preparation, I can't overstate the amount of preparation that went into actually being able to interview well. Uh, so next thing I wanted to talk about, as promised, some tips for engineering students. Number one is going to be follow your passion and be prepared to work hard. Getting an engineering internship is very competitive. And applying to an internship doesn't equal an interview. A lot of students have a misconception that if they apply to an internship, they're just going to get an interview, but that's absolutely not the case. You more than likely won't get an interview right, right away when you apply to an internship. It's going to take uh, quite a lot of applying online to get a, an internship interview. And actually the three ways we've identified to getting an engineering internship is basically applying online, cold networking, and then on-campus career fairs. So you gotta be working all three of those at once. The next thing I wanna share is you have to be prepared to work exceptionally hard if you want to achieve elite levels of success. It's not going to be easy. Anything worth achieving is not easy. You have to be prepared to work very hard. And number three, even if you're not successful right away, keep working at it because you never lose if you never quit. Just keep going and you only got to be right once. You only got to have one person take a chance on you to give you an interview or to hire you to, to, to get the ball rolling. So the next thing I want to share with you is focus on developing a quality set of skills and experiences. Remember that step one of the six steps of getting an engineering internship is that set of quality skills and experiences. So focus on that because I really think that the experience and skills sections of your resume are, are, are the literal bulk of your resume for a reason. Because that I think is where you're going to be doing a lot of the convincing to convince somebody to take a chance on you, give you an offer, extend an opportunity to interview. The number third thing I wanna share with you is get started now because the snowball effect is real and you don't want to get left behind. When I say the snowball effect is real, you basically will get that first internship. It's gonna to be tough, but then once you get that first one, that second one under your belt, it's a lot easier to get more internships. And then also you don't want to get left behind. Every day that you're not spending putting in some effort to get that first or next internship, there's other students out there that are putting in the effort. So get started now because the snowball effect is real. And every day you're not working towards getting an engineering internship, there are other students out there that are working to get an engineering internship. So let us know how you liked this video in the comments, if there's anything else you want me to talk about or touch on, but also check out some of these videos that are gonna be popping up on the screen. Let me know if you're interested in any of those, or if there's anything I didn't talk about, like I said, you want me to answer, but check out our page too for some more engineering internship uh, advice.